Thank you for joining The Real News. I'm Eddie Conway from Baltimore, and we're returning with part two of our discussion on video visitation with Bernadette Reba. Bernadette Reba joined the Prison Policy Initiative as a policy communication associate in August of 2014. A graduate of the University of California, Berkeley, she has previously worked with National Council on Crime and Delinquency, Voice of the Ex-Offender, and Californians United for a Responsible Budget. Bernadette led the research on the vis video visitation industry and co-authored the first comprehensive national survey of the industry, Screening Out Family Time, the for-profit video visitation industry in prisons and jails. Thank you for joining me, Bernadette. Thanks for having me. Are there other organizations out there looking at this video visitation uh, in, uh, with an eye toward uh, some, called, some kind of reform, uh, uh, or at least bringing it to the public attention? Because I think it's happening and it's slowly creeping into the prison systems. I think you reported it. it's in like 500 prisons already. Uh, so who's watching this and who's responding to it? Right. So we, um, we have seen a lot of action in Texas. Um, so for example, there have been protests recently, recently in Denton County, Texas. They are trying to get, um, the sheriff to reverse his ban on in-person visits, which was implemented in January. Um, there were actually two new lawsuits as of yesterday about their video visitation in Denton County, Texas. One is saying that um, Texas has these two standards about the need to provide two visits per week for each incarcerated person in Texas. And the argument of this one lawsuit is that those visits that are a standard uh, those were intended to be in-person visits, um, not video visits. And then another class action lawsuit about Securus, which is the company that provides video visits in Denton, them having a monopoly over the service. So um, there's, there's been really great on-the-ground work in Texas, in Dallas, in Texas. Um, they actually got their county legislators to um, remove the ban on in-person visits before they implemented video visits. So they will be implementing video visits, but as a supplement rather than as a replacement to in-person visits. And then in January, we actually also had um, the sheriff of Multnomah County, um, which is where Portland is. He reversed his ban on in-person visits after pressure from a homeless newspaper, Street Roots, as well as county legislators. So we've definitely been seeing some some people really working to make sure that these video visitation systems aren't just punishing families and incarcerated people. And and I wonder, is anybody looking at the 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 impact that these kind of visitations are having in terms of causing people to uh, get further and further away from their family in terms of not having that human contact? and not having that real physical interaction, does, is that going to actually start diminishing prisoners in terms of how they fit into the social network that they are part of and, and as family members? Right. So, yeah, that's a problem with video visitation is, you know, there's, there's an impact that it has on family members who want to stay in touch with their incarcerated loved ones, but also it's just not smart for public safety. Um, in fact, it violates best standards provided by the American Correctional Association and the American Bar Association. And it's, you know, we haven't done the research in terms of whether or not a video visit is the same as in-person visits. And the research that is out there about video visitation says it isn't and really talks about how video visitation can be beneficial as a supplemental option. Um, another study that was done besides the, the one that we did here at Prison Policy Initiative 
um, was done by the Osborne Association and funded by the Department of Justice. And they make the same argument that, um, you know, video visitation shouldn't be seen as an invitation to ban traditional visits. Who, who is making money from this? I, I heard you mention one company, and I think there's other companies you named in the report. Who's actually profiting from this? So it's many of the same people that are in the phones industry. Um, so Securus is the you know biggest company providing video visitation in county jails, um, and they charge a dollar per minute uh, generally. And yeah, they are a big phones company. And then another company, for example, is JPay, which provides video visitation in state prisons. Um, they do money transfers. Um, so yeah, that's another thing with video visitation. It usually gets added to contracts for other things. Um, so it's more, much more common for video visitation to be added to a contract for phones or a contract for um, money transfers. It's not as common for it to be just a contract for video visitation. Okay. Here, here in the state of Maryland, there is already uh, a pilot program that's uh, often video visitation for family members. Uh, and I think they uh, 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 cited somewhere down in downtown Baltimore, a family member can go to the location and have a video visitation. Is this is the state making money from this? Do you do you know if this is a a profit making uh, arrangement that the state has set up? Because I know it's already started, but I don't know if it's cost costing anything or not. So I'm not sure about Maryland specifically, but um, these contracts usually do include a commission, which means the county jail or the state department of corrections does get a portion of the profits from video visitation. The other thing is that these companies, um, they really make video visitation attractive to county jails and departments of corrections because they offer to provide video visitation free of cost. So they tell, you know, they tell the sheriff that he doesn't have to pay anything um, to implement this video system. And on top of that, he could even get some revenue from the commission. So, you know, that's another reason why video visitation has really grown in the past three years. Okay, and I'm sure this is going to continue to grow, uh, and we're going to have to revisit it again. So thank you for joining me. Thanks so much. And thank you for joining The Real News. Mm -hmm.